I'd like to describe a series of three exercises that you can do which will strengthen your rotator cuff. Now, this is incredibly important because rotator cuff injuries are the most common type of injuries and the most common symptom that people get is impingement. So, so there are two things that or two modes that happen when you lift your arm up sideways. The correct mode is that the rotator cuff holds the head down and pulls it inwards. So when you lift your arm up, there's all the space in the world as the, as the head of the humerus slips underneath the acromion. The second mode is that the rotator cuff itself doesn't engage properly and therefore the first movement is that the head of the humerus floats upwards and as you lift your arm up it digs in and that's impingement. So these exercises are designed to strengthen your rotator cuff and in particular to strengthen three important muscles. The first is supraspinatus which is the single most important muscle but is the one that's most commonly damaged. The second is the infraspinatus and the third is the subscapularis. These three muscles arise from the scapula and wrap themselves around the head of the humerus con and when they contract they pull the humerus down and in. So the first exercise is to strengthen the supraspinatus muscle. Now you can do this one of two ways. Uh, the first is using this which is called a theraband. These are available in different strengths, different colors give you uh, different elastic strengths. So they're bits of, of elastic which is just rolled off a tape and you use this as a, um, you work against the elastic force of the theraband. Even though the, there are, there's great complexity in the shoulder, there is one particular movement which is a pure supraspinatus movement. And that is that if you have your arm at your side, the first 10 degrees of movement is just the supraspinatus muscle. So you have two choices here. So I've, I've hooked the theraband around me and I've hooked it, slipped my arm through there and now I just lift my arm out and release it. Lift my arm out and release it. The TheraBand itself, as I say, they're different colors, or if you get a longer bit, you can double it over, swing it around you, and as you progress, I've doubled the TheraBand now, so now I've got double the resistance, and pull out and back slowly. So doing this kind of exercise, you're getting two kinds of work for the supraspinatus. The first is you're getting concentric contraction, which means that the muscle is contracting and then shortening to pull the arm out. And then because of the ongoing resistance by the theraband, if I bring it in slowly, I'm getting eccentric contraction. And eccentric contraction is the I'm holding the TheraBand and I'm slowly bringing it in so the muscle is contracting but it's getting longer as I do that. The eccentric contraction is the more important of the two types of contraction. That is, when I was holding my arm out and slowly bringing it in against the resistance of the TheraBand, it has been shown that that type of exercise seems to stimulate healing and strengthening of tendons and the rotator cuff injuries almost invariably involves the tendon itself or the musculotendinous junction or where the tendon joins into the bone. So that's your first exercise. Now if you can't get a TheraBand and you don't have to walk around with one all the time, you can actually 
do this exercise in a different way for yourself. So all you do is pop your hand over to the other side of your, of your body and I resist. So I'm, I'm resisting the pull of my arm and then I, as I come back in again, I keep pulling and pushing against my arm and it comes back in again. So, in some ways, this is actually a, be a better exercise because the beauty of this arm is that it can give a totally appropriate amount of resistance to that you need. And how much do you need? Well, it depends on, on the, your own strength and obviously the damage in your shoulder. So the question is, how hard do you need to push against your arm? Or how strong do you need to make the resistance training from the TheraBand? And the answer is that if you let any pain be your guide, you will not actually do any exercise. So you need to recognize that there are really two kinds of pain. And... I can't be scientific about it, but we all know what I mean when I, when I describe it. The first kind of pain is as you start doing it, oh, you get a little twinge. Oh, that doesn't feel, but yeah, I can still do that. Oh, yes, I come back. Little twinges. That kind of pain, irrelevant. Don't worry about it. You've had some shoulder damage. You would expect as you start to exercise to have some discomfort or little twinge. The second kind of pain is, oh, God, I've, I've done something serious here. Now that kind of pain is a much more intense, uh, stops you in your tracks, you may feel a bit of nausea. That kind of pain obviously is the kind of pain that you should not cause when you're doing your exercises. But little bits of pain, you can work through that and you're not actually causing damage by doing that. So it's an essential, it's just a sensory perception. But you do need to have or you, or you can have little bits of pain or discomfort while doing these exercises. It's a, an essential part of strengthening and conditioning and healing tendons and muscles. You start off, uh, to the, the simplest way to, to, to conceive of this is to do sets of 10. And the way I do it is that you would, and this will apply to all the other exercises, is that I lift up, and I go, it usually I'm counting sort of one, two, three, one, two, three. So I'm just gently pushing out to the count of three, coming back to the count of three. I do ten of those, doesn't take very long. And then you're going to do similarly ten of the others. And you can do them in sets of ten. How often can you do them? As often as you like. And the beauty here is that you can just be sitting at, the, at your computer or you can be standing around in a queue somewhere. Uh, you can be sitting waiting for um, the traffic light to change and you can just quietly work away strengthening your supraspinatus. The, the question of how much is enough and how much is too much uh, comes back to the the other statement that I made about pain. If while you're doing it, you're, you get a bit of discomfort and as time goes on, you, you can feel things strengthening up, the pain is not getting worse and you're doing fine. And then you can just quietly work away at it. You know, these exercises are just gentle strengthening exercises and um, you, in a way, you can't really overdo them. So the minimum I would do would be I'd do three sets of 10 in the morning, in the middle of the day, and towards the evening. But because they're so easy to do, I would kind of do them through the day and just sit quietly and just sit away and gently work away at my rotator cuff. And they, uh, so doing it like this is perfectly safe. If you get that other kind of pain, then you've either done too much or the resistance that you've um, provided has been too great.
because of course if the resistance is huge and you really push against it, you can re-tear. So that's why it's, you're, you're using the exquisite feedback loops in your, in your mind and your body to customize and optimize these exercises. So that's the first exercise and to some extent is actually the most important because well over 90% of rotator cuff tears and rotator cuff injuries involve the supraspinatus tendon because of its strange anatomy, its vulnerable anatomy. The second is to exercise to strengthen your infraspinatus muscle. Now the infraspinatus muscle, you can go back and uh, look at the anatomy of it. So essentially the infraspinatus muscle will externally rotate your arm like that. So it's easy if you want to strengthen the muscle. Take a TheraBand, wrap it around your arm, hold it with your other arm. Here's the important thing, you tuck your elbow into your side and then you rotate out and I'm resisting with this hand and come back in again. Again the same concepts apply. So by rotating out I go one, two, three, one, two, three. I'm and it's the eccentric contraction, the re contracting against the resistance but lengthening the muscle is the one that really does the healing work. Both of them are going to strengthen the muscle. If the infraspinatus becomes stronger, it will again pull the head of the humerus inwards and will help with movements such that you won't get impingement. Again, same rule applies. Sets of 10, and you do a minimum of three sets of 10, but you can kind of work away at it. So if you don't have a TheraBand, same thing applies. You can put your other hand here or over the top, and you can use the resistance of your arm to do exactly the same exercises. Always remember, if you're doing that, you're not exercising your infraspinatus. So you've got to tuck your elbow into your hip against your body and then you're rotating out and coming in, strengthening your infraspinatus. The third is your subscapularis. Now the subscapularis is actually the most bulky of the rotator cuff muscles and the way that you exercise this is, and this is a specific subscapularis move, is that you turn your arm so that your arm is at, your forearm is at 90 degrees, the elbow is at 90 degrees, and your arm is quite parallel here to the axis, side axis of your body. And then the movement is that you lift straight up. So you lift up and down. That's a pure subscapularis movement. So looking at me from here, I'm going to be lifting my arm off my belly, but keeping the arm in the same plane as my body, like that. So if you're going to resist that, you put a TheraBand and you can put it over here, or if you want to get fancy, oopsie, if you want to get fancy, you can wrap it round you like this and you pull it forward like that. And again, one, two, three, one, two, three, in that way. The distance you pull it out, you don't have to pull it right up because rotator cuff muscles don't do huge movements. They're essentially just little balancing muscles. 
So it's really only the first 10 to 15 degrees of movement for each muscle. It's only the first 10 to 15 degrees that is a pure rotator cuff muscle. And all the rest are your big power muscles which take over the movement. So in the same way, when, if you want to, you can do the same thing. You can resist here or you can resist. And this is in fact a better way because you've got your, you put your other arm straight over the top of your, uh, just mirroring the, the arm that's going to do the work. And then you lift up two, three, and down, two, three, two, three, down, two, three. And again, the same. You do, you do groups of 10 movements, and you do at least three groups of 10 movements of each of these over the day, interspersing them with just sitting, playing away. <laughs> and if you do this, and you couple this these exercises, together with the other that I spoke of, which is learning to turn on your rotator cuff muscles first as you make a movement, allowing the shoulder to just drop down, which I described in, in great detail before, you will optimize the movement of your shoulder. And it, you know, it's incredibly gratifying and um, exciting how well your body will adapt and heal even from what look like quite large tears your body will adapt and heal such that you should be able to get a pretty normal range of movement which is pain-free doing these exercises and allowing your shoulder to work in its most optimal manner <laughs>